Hello, welcome back to Ulf United WSC, first one of the year. We finally made it. Uh, it's been a little bit later than we would have wanted, but uh, we, we have finally made it. And there's only one place to start. A uh, nice 10-0 thrashing. I, I, I mean, we're going to get into it all, the kind of opposition and everything else, because uh, I'm sure that was to be talked about as well. But we've got two people here that were at the game, at the Q&A, met the players, did everything. That probably more than me and Barry have done in about two and a half years following, following United women around. Um, so we've called in the experts for this one in Kirsty And a first-time appearance from... I hope I'm saying your name right, by the way. It is, it's Ramon, isn't it? I'm not... Uh, I haven't put you on mute, so you just want to... Um, quickly unmute yourself just to confirm i'm definitely saying that right yes yes nice one cool um right i come to, i'm not going to waste any time because we've only got uh kind of 40 minutes or so tonight Kirsty, i'll come to you first um just the atmosphere in and around over the kind of i don't know how long united were there but kind of three four days obviously you met them a bit earlier the, the whole thing around the q a the game and obviously afterwards as well what was the the feeling around was there many fans around that knew of the women's team that followed them for a long time what was it kind of the general feeling around the place so, so coming from women's football in Malta, myself many of my friends were excited so I, I felt a lot of hype from my friends and people i know however there are lots of um my united fans that maybe don't follow the women's team that wanted to get a taste of it and understand where they're coming from who they are and what we expect from them so there, it was very nice. People were trying to get to know more. Or people wanted to meet them. Were excited. At the end of the day, if, if it's women or men, it's Manchester United. So the excitement is always going to be there because when you, when, when anybody that has anything to do with Man United coming to Malta, we're always proud and we always want to give them the warmest welcome ever. So yeah, that, no. that's the vibe. <laughs> No, 100%. You're right there when it's United. I think obviously we're going to talk about the attendance as well. Cause I'm pretty sure it was a, a, a sellout as well and a record attendance there. But, Ramon, for yourself, we were just briefly talking backstage. You've not had too many forays into the women's team, so to speak. But again, like I said, you, you did it all. You did the, the Q&A and met the players yes. and, and the game itself. How was it for, for you in and around the place? Well, it was quite exciting to be a fair, to follow the team, to see them up close. It's always uh nice to see to be able to experience that and to be fair it was also um how can i explain like uh surprising how uh they the professional setup that they have obviously um but for me it was quite surprising considering that a few weeks earlier i've seen uh inter in the same uh setup and I have to say that the women team of Inter, uh, the women team of United, were much more organised than than the male team of Inter Milan. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting shout. I did not know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely growing, isn't it, Barry? I think there's a lot of comments as well talking about the fact that it wasn't on MUTV. I think Barry, you've literally just replied. Obviously, United men's side were on later that evening. Um, in obviously the cup against Everton, which is maybe why I'd like to have seen some highlights. Though I think that could have could have been publicised. But before I go back to uh, to Kirsty and Ramon Barry, just quickly for yourself, what, do you think I'll bring up John's come actually and throw it at you? Do you think United did miss a bit of a trick here by not advertising? I mean, to be fair, the scoreline would suggest they probably did the right thing in not putting that on TV because it was pretty one sided by the sounds of it. But do you think there should have been something out there? Well, I, mean, I don't think the one-sidedness really matters. <clears throat> I think you stick anything on like that where you're going to get 10 goals, it's entertaining at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, I think if you go back to the Bridgewater FA Cup match last season when we were sitting there thinking we'd probably stick 10 past them, we're going to get the one. You know, sitting there waiting for the goal to come in. So you can never really guarantee it. So I don't think the scoreline uh, really matters too much from the end. But certainly, um, <clears throat> you know, yes, they could have shown it. I see what you're saying there, John. Yes, it could have been on the... Um, on MUTV, but I, I think the vast majority of people probably would have tuned in for the Everton game, um, if I'm brutally honest, with it being the FA Cup third round. Um, you know, you, I think it, what it comes down to, again, is it's just the clashing things. And if you if you have a chat with us again on Wednesday, I'm sure that's going to be a part of our fans' forum. But I think that's the big thing, is that there's too much clashing of men's matches and women's matches, and there's not enough thought process going into... How do we get the fans? Because you just said it, Kirsty. whether it's women, whether it's men, it's Manchester United. And what you don't want to be doing is making your Manchester United fans decide, do I watch the women or do I watch the men? 
it's, it's too much. You can't do that. So but for me, I think there's more around the scheduling of it that, that, that could be helpful. Um, but no, I, I don't necessarily think they've missed a trick. I think there's enough football for us to see um, and enough going on with the, the women's side as it is. So no, I'm, I'm not overly worried, but I really would have liked to have seen some highlights. So that's why I'm grateful that we have these two superstars down here uh, sending all their stuff through so that we could at least have a taste of what was going on. So I suppose we got a, a feeling of what it must be like uh, for you guys, really, because you have to rely on the some of the bits and pieces that we throw through or the uh, or the highlights that get put on. So, yeah, we just kind of got a taste of, of what it must be like to be an international fan. 100%. And Sarah's right there, even the admin, just a half-time and a full-time post. And and even then, that confused us because, as you'll find out, we thought Kira Barry had scored. Turned out she hadn't. Um, also, the, 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 the Twitter post had suggested as well. So even trying to post scores, I was trying to keep everyone updated, but even that was difficult because of... You know, not knowing certainly, yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit all over the place. But anyway, um, I wanted to come to you, Kirsty, actually, and ask you about the opposition. Who we who United played because uh, you you just told us backstage you've actually played this team yourself. <laughs> um, so just to, for yourself, what what are they like? What kind of team? Obviously, we know roughly their ability based on the scoreline. Obviously, it's a one off game. But what kind of team are they? Do you, were United? I don't know. Should United have been tested more? Are they better than what they showed, or do you think that was about right? Um, we United were playing Malta as champions for the last four or five consecutive years, and they have been lost for the f last four or five consecutive years. So they're the best that they can get in this country. Um, Birkakara gave everything. I don't think they could have given more. Um, their physical side, when you you know when you compare them to other Maltese teams and technical as well, and they're the, the team that is closer to being a bit on the professional side in terms of the money they have, the, 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 the stuff they prepare and the people that work there. So, I mean, that's the best that they could get in this country. Unfortunately for Birkirkara, you know, I don't blame them. Those players are hobby. It's a hobby for them, football. You know, it's, it's not like the United players, they train two sessions a day or, you know, everything is football, 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 football. These guys, they go to work go to training then they have to go home prepare prepare stuff clean clean and do, you know and they have to clean their own training clothes and their own things so it's like training against people who for them football is a hobby but they they do a lot of effort they train very frequently so i wasn't expecting better from Birkirkara. they did try their best maybe they could have attacked maybe a bit more but you know, when you're playing Manchester United, it does, you know, get maybe a little bit of more butterflies. You know, it's their first big, big, big game. So I wasn't, I was expecting a, a big score, maybe not 10, but, you know, I, it, 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 they weren't playing a team that's on the same professional level as United. But I respect them because they did give their best. They, they, they try to keep the basics and, um, you know, at at a point, even in the second half, they did keep United a bit quiet. So I think that's the best that they could have given at the end of the day. It's an interesting point you make there, isn't it? Because that just shows the level disparity in the countries, that if this is the best team, they haven't lost for kind of four and a half or, you know, five seasons or, or you know, what you just said there. And United rolling. I know it obviously different setups, full-time professional and everything else. That makes a massive difference. So it's equivalent. I'm trying to think of an equivalent, Barry. It's got to be like playing a tier three English side, tier three, tier four kind of level is, is where I'm thinking of if they're semi-pro, but the best of that. That's, mm, yeah. that's just kind of where I'm thinking of at the moment. I'd say probably tier four, tier five, maybe. Um, you know, you're looking at WNL, maybe sort of regional, potentially. Um, but then I, I suppose I think there might, might be a bigger pool of players to choose from. Um, over here with more people that are interested in doing it. And I think that's the thing. And I, I don't think we can discount. I mean, I, I might be wrong here. I don't live there. But sending Manchester United over will surely build the profile of the game just a little bit as well and to see what's maybe possible. So, you know, I do feel like that might be a question you're going to come on to later on. Sorry. But, um, but I think, yeah, absolutely. Sending them out there as well does do that. So, you know, it's, it's about building the game as much as it is about building the team. No, 100%. There's a comment that someone's just put in that I wanted to ask in a second anyway. But, Ramon, for yourself, how did you kind of see the game then? Did you expect 
United to kind of do because I think obviously we were messaging throughout the game anyway. I think there was a period of about 20 minutes after half time, United didn't score. Were United still dominant at that point? Was it still as you expected, or do well, you think that we might have expected any different? Well, it was a completely different 11 in the first place, so that has to be taken into account. And Berker Kara were playing with the same 11 that were playing in the first half. Um, in the first half, I believe that. I was feeling after around 3-0, I was feeling that every attack that United were going to uh, put up, it was going to lead into a goal. Um, the defense of Berger Car was all over the place. Um, then again, some of United's passing, I felt that could have been better, uh, of which I believe that United didn't even go out of second gear in the first half. And yet the score was 6-0 at halftime. Uh, in the second half, I think when you change 11 players at the same time um, and Berger Kara were playing with the same 11 of the first half, I think obviously it's going to take some time to find your feet. But then again, 4-0, um, a total wipeout of, of Berger Kara, um, which I mean, I was expecting more goals to be fair, um, but then again, I think United, um, even in the second half with the 11 players that went on, um, they just basically honoured the fixture of the second half. And I think it was basically wrapped up after 10 minutes, in my opinion. So it was quite, uh, for, a neutral, for a neutral, it was quite boring, I, I believe. But for, for me, myself, I quite enjoyed uh, the victory. No, that's a, that's a fair point. I think how, how would the, how would the, you know I'm not going to attempt the name. Apologies, I keep skirting around it because I don't want to try and butcher their name. But how would they feel because if they've not lost in four four and a bit years, would, well, would they deflate? How how did they look after the game? Were they I, a bit downbeat? I, or? I think I, I don't think so. Actually, I saw some of the posts. I think they're quite still uh, honoured because how many Maltese women will actually get to say I played against Manchester United? So. That in the, in the first place is actually quite something that can make you feel proud of yourself. And then again, I think um, what Burkirka could have done is they could have, uh, obviously, you're playing against Manchester United. You're not going to go out guns blazing because you will get beaten up very badly. But then again, I think they should have had a little bit more of more character, more heart, uh, because I believe just like Kirsty said, they it's like they had the butterfly effect. And in the first half, by 10 minutes, they were, I think, 2-0 or 3-0, I don't know. So it was, you, you cannot have a game of football and then go out. And I don't care if you're playing against Manchester United or any other team in your league. You have, Berker Kara should have done better, but United are United, so you cannot say anything more. No, 100%. I, I want to get back to this question because I don't want to leave it too long, but I just wanted to share. Chess made a couple of points here about it being a sponsor trip and a, and a warm weather camp. Wash is here, actually. Make sure you go and subscribe or follow, I should say, the Women's Football Podcast if you don't already because it's a fantastic listen that Chess hosts over there. So make sure you go and check that out. Um, I wanted to come back to this kind of uh, what United have got out of this trip in a little bit, but there was a question a bit further on that I had written down, um, and I'll start with yourself, Kirsty, on this one. Um who impressed? Was there anyone in particular that kind of really stood out from a United point of view? Obviously, like I said, it's a bit difficult with two um, different 11s and that kind of thing. So only really had kind of 45 minutes each. But Kirsty, for yourself first, who, who was the big standout for you? Ooh, this is difficult. Um, I think Alessia just proves how important she is as a striker. I mean, all the crosses that Ona was sending in, she was always being dangerous. She didn't miss big chances, but... Um, she, at the end of the day, she still was a danger. That she was a threat. They were marking her all the time. They, and one of their best defenders, Brickakara's best defenders, who was very physical, was struggling. And I was, yeah, she's she's too, she's too too much to handle. So I think for me, Alessia's up there. I think my close second is Ona. I might be a bit biased because I love Ona, but she was putting in some dangerous crosses with the right wing. I forgot. I forgot her name. And they were interchanging from you know, the overlaps and, you know, creating um, havoc on the right, on United's right-hand side to put in those crosses. Um, Leon had a good match as well. 
on the left hand side. So I think the wings mostly because um, since Berkakara closed centrally as much as possible, since the center is the dangerous part, they made you know United were very dangerous on the wings. But yeah, apart from Alessia who was creating so much chaos, I think I put on a close second. So yeah, those two for me. They are so close. So I'll take those two, Ona and, and Alessia. No, that's a fair point. And I agree with TJ. We're all biased for Ona. <laughs> I think, uh, and Charlie's quickly following it. It's not biased if it's true, which, to be <laughs> fair, Ona gets player of the match most times. She's on the pitch. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that one too much there. But, Ramon, for yourself, who, who stood out for you then? Well, as, I mean, there's so many goal scorers to, to, mainly, <laughs> to go through. But Yeah. Well, mainly there's one player it's Rousseau. Uh, every time she got the ball, you could sense that something was going to happen. Um, just like uh, Kirsty said, they were trying, attempting to be physical on her, but then again, she was like always one, two, three, four steps ahead. Just a- as soon as the defender might have th- might think that you can get the ball, you're not going to get the ball because she's already behind you. So um, she... I was I saw her already, like I said to you earlier before the show started last uh, May. I saw her play and she was amazing. Uh, via television, I saw them uh, during the Euros, and again she was. But to see her that close against that type of opposition, it was like uh, bullying <laughs> uh, at at certain point because she she she's outstanding. Uh, and let's hope that United could get her down on a new contract soon. Well, I'm sure we are. I'm sure we're going to be fighting for her. Uh, as we've always said, it takes two to tango. It doesn't matter how much we dangle a carrot. Somebody's got to sign it as well. Um, and hopefully she will do that. But I had a question for you, uh, and Yehuda stole it. Um, we haven't seen Grace Clinton play in this country yet um, because when she played before it was a pre-season friendly and we had to watch on our teddy box uh, and the same thing happened here as well. So you've had a few players, uh, you've had Kira Barry, Jess Simpson I believe played a little bit there as well but <clears throat> some of these lesser known players, the ones that we haven't seen yet, um, what sort of Efforts did you see from them? I mean, we saw that Clinton got on the score sheet. There's a debate as to whether or not Kira Barry slash Jade Moore scored as well. Um, but what are your thoughts on, on on those three? How do you think they got on? Simpson, Clinton and Barry. So uh, if, if I can answer this question myself, I believe that it felt like even though um, and then I didn't realise this, I only realised this after, uh, it felt like they have been like it's not their debuts or some of their first minutes with the team it felt like they have been playing with the team for a long time and i think that shows how much of a chemistry the team has together um so that was one point that i really noticed it's like this when you see a new player coming on the field sometimes they can look out of place but those players did not look out of place at all in their team Definitely good to hear that. Definitely good to hear that. Kirsty, would, would that be the same for you? Yes, in fact, when I saw the lineup and I saw the team play, there clearly is an idea of how Mark wants to play when teams close uh, the, the gaps and when they're being con- it's congested on the pitch. But it seems like it's not just one player knows more than the other. They all know what they have to do. They were very patient and it seems like the training they're doing is is helping them in terms of if you're not playing too much you still know the job that you have to do and you you still understand what's going on and what mark wants from them and i think the best you know part of it is that whoever went in on the pitch they gave their best not just because, even if they were like four nil up or ten nil up they gave their best they they put on what they did in training because there were a lot of patterns that shows that they practiced um, in the sessions. And obviously that's good because that builds up the morale for the rest of the season, that the team is in one shape. There's a, you know, they're being as one, not just uh, separate three star players and you're depending on them. So 
God forbid we have an injury or something, I'm, 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 I'm putting a bet that we, we, we will be fine in terms of getting that Champions League spot because from what I've seen, they are all on the same page and hopefully, you know, that continues uh, in the future. No, it, it's good to hear, and as like Charlie said there, that's nice to hear. The first thing you need to be successful is a cohesive squad. It's all very well and good having the best players in the world if they don't want to play together. <laughs> it's never going to work. Um, speaking of injuries, someone just mentioned uh, Aoife Mannion there. Um, I believe she started, didn't she? I think she came off at our time. I'm just getting my facts right. I should. I think she did anyway. Um, but a question, but how, how did she get on? I, I don't imagine she was tested too much. Um, <laughs> with any kind of uh, great deal of, of stress to United's back line. But did she look, uh, I guess for her, it's more fitness than, than anything, but did she look solid from any attacks that, that, that they might have had? I don't know. Whether, did they have any? <laughs> um, the Maltese side or? Um, I, they only had like one attack, you can say. I wouldn't call it an attack. It was an attempt of an attack. I mean, um, but... In terms of, excuse me, defence, United were just well positioned, disciplined, and they they weren't tested. So you can say, look, the defence was well. I wouldn't really talk about defence if if I'm going to talk about this match. I talk about more about the build up and, you know, the attacking play more than defence. But I mean, you see that a player is healthy, everyone was moving well, There, there wasn't like, you know, this kind of fear of post injury, especially in ACL, which is a horrific injury to have. So, yeah, I mean, nobody looked, I mean, from all the team, nobody looked off. They just were raring to go and they're, they're hungry for the, for the rest of the season. That's that's how they look. So, yeah. No, that's good to hear. And I'll, right, Barry, I'm first back over to you then, too. And I'll come to, to both of you in a second. But what... What can United take from this game? What do you think United learn? Obviously, I know that we're all going to mention match fitness, so I'm going to throw that out there straight away um, because that is obviously the obvious one in there. Outside of that, could United have learned anything, do you think, from from this game, Barry, from the knowledge that we've got from from these two people and from little bits and pieces that we've seen elsewhere as well? As we said, I don't necessarily think it is a knowledge thing. I think by this point of the year, without any new signings, Mark's going to know what his team is and which players he's going to use. Um, I think that the knowledge side will come from having given the the people that are sort of battling for those places a chance to to shine and to show what they can do. And we've learned there that they're, they're cohesive. The team itself is good. And that's a massive thing as well, the togetherness of the club. The fact that you've got... You know, they're all on this boat having that wonderful time, aren't they? Jumping into the water and just chilling out on a yacht, enjoying life. Things like that can be really good because they've just had a really tough month. They've had a month of watching the World Cup, um, no football. They've not really been able to do much other than maybe train. They've been on their own in little pockets. What this does, I think, is it brings them all back together as a team, <clears throat> gives them the opportunity to training nice weather as well. It's not just straight out into the absolute belting rain like it has been uh, for some of the local football clubs that I know. So I think really what they've managed to get from that is the ability to, it is the match fitness. That is, of course, the big one. You don't want to just go in cold uh, against a team like Liverpool. But what you do want to be doing is to have that togetherness as a team, have them all back together, uh, the ability to remind them of the responsibilities. The fact they went out there and scored 10, I mean, I'll say it again. We played Bridgewater, one, one goal, you know, and Bridgewater, I am not going to say, I, I don't think Bridgewater would stick 10 past Malta. Like, was it two? They put in two. two. I, I'm pretty sure it was two. <laughs> you should, I would have giggled all that just why, yeah, because I, I, I felt like it was only one, but I will check unless somebody else can get on there. But either way, one or two, it's still not 10, is it? So, you know, I think sometimes these things can be a problem. It's not been. We've gone straight in there. We've been scoring goals in the WSL. And now we're scoring goals um, against Berka Kara. Is that right, Kirsty? It's not that hard, Connor. Yeah, yep, you got it. You got it. Don't be scared of the letters. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's, because, it's because when I when I googled it, you look at the you look at how it's written down. And I was like, oh my life, how about on that? <laughs> Did you say that? It's just like loads of R, Ks, and A's just thrown together. There you go. There's your word. <laughs> so I thought I'm not attempting that. Um, I'll come back to to, to both of you then, Ramon. I'll come to you first on this one. Then, but do you think, you, aside from match finish, United would have learned anything? I get 
I guess somebody mentioned earlier, it was, it was the point I was going to bring back that the weather over there. I mean, what was it? What was it kind of temperature wise? I'm assuming it was hot. It, it seems to always be um, hot in but... Yeah, it was quite warm, if, to be fair. But uh, I think compared, the main thing about this game was to get the rest off. Uh, nothing that they have done over this match will affect what they will do this week against Liverpool. Um, I I believe it's just getting sharp, getting getting on the on the on the pitch, get some minutes in, and that's just about it. Uh, even like I said earlier, I believe United didn't even get about out of second gear. So I believe it's just about getting the sharp sharpness in. Um, I believe United won't take anything in particular out of this match, besides the minutes that they got. Uh, that's just about it, in my opinion. No, that's fair. But it's a difficult question because there isn't too many. Th- is this a chant, by the way? Is this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that their official <laughs> official it's chant? Right, it's no, 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 no. It's the most annoying chant ever. <laughs> Was there, just on that very quickly, actually, was there any atmosphere at the game? Was there any kind of songs being sung for the players or for anything mm. else? What was it like from that point of view? No, they, most of the time it was quite quiet. Uh, just some, some cheers when the goals go in, and there were some like people with drums and flags and that sort of stuff, but they weren't uh, loud, if I have to say so myself. A little bit different to what United are used to then. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that might might have done them good, to be fair. Just having a little bit of a, a relax away from the noisy loss <laughs> yeah. from the United fan base. Um, Kirsty, just back to yourself, around enough kind of the on-field stuff. For yourself, was there anything that you think United can take away from the game? I know, obviously, you had a, a couple of chats with Mark Skinner before and after the game. Was there anything that he might have said to, to take away from it or anything? Um, I mean, I don't what Ramon said is quite point, you know, on point. Um, terms of preparation for Liverpool, you know, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna be ready for Liverpool by playing against Berker Kara. But um, what Mark did say, and I think we will all agree that, you know, it's about the atmosphere. It's about getting a team together. It's about maybe uh, tweaking some stuff. You know, Ber- Ber- he knew Berker Kara were going to be, you know, congested in the middle. So he really wanted to focus on the wings. So, and it showed because there were patterns in, t- in, our, in the attack that uh, the team were working on because it was it was consistent on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So maybe he's focusing on it to play against a team that is going to be defending for most of the matches. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's not going to unlock some sort of potential for the whole season that will win us the league, for example. It's, it's, it's a good, you know, um, uh, start for those who have been missing out on matches. So they can get a bit of, you know, the, the, the vibe of, of playing a game and maybe, you know, start getting a bit of confidence. But I think for them, it was also mentally getting out of, of the UK, go somewhere different, be, feel a bit fresh and then play a match, you know, get, get some some of the basics you've done in training, you know, brush off on them and then go back and smash it, hopefully, you know. So that's, I think, what... What I mean, what he was saying, he was really focusing on warm weather, warm weather, warm weather. So, I think he's he wanted the fitness to be on point, to be ready, to be prepared for the, you know the second round of the season. No, that's a fair point you make, and yeah, definitely getting it because I think a lot of the other teams are. I think Arsenal played a behind closed doors friendly against Tottenham. I think Chelsea have played a friendly as well over the weekend. I'm not quite sure who though. So, the teams yeah. obviously definitely getting ready for the WSL restart again. Um, but yeah, I was just intrigued because I think we are the only team that went abroad. I think everyone else stayed in this country and played a couple of friendlies in here. So fair points there. Um, there's a lot of talk about Liverpool. Talking about has Lanzel started off the Liverpool chat already? Come back Friday, Lanzel, when we do our Liverpool preview and we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that one in detail. I think has he gone for four nil? Oh, he's, he's gone in for it. Yeah, four nil. It's going to be goal tastic. He's straight in. Not bothered about Malta, less than straight in at Liverpool. He's bosh. He's excited, bless him. <laughs> Don't need to apologise, Lanza. Just make sure you're back on Friday. <laughs> we have our full Liverpool preview on that one. Um, I wanted to talk to you both about some of the off-the-field stuff then, and then Barry, I'm going to tie you into this as well in a second. But 
obviously the, the United team were there for quite a few days. Obviously, Ramon, you kicked off the, the Twitter posting with your, I think it was your Russo picture that you, you stuck on first and then kind of Twitter went <laughs> mad after that. Yeah, uh, actually, it was the video first. Was it a vi- that's the players yes, arriving? Yes, that was it. Yes, that yes, it. that's it. Yeah. Um, but what, what was it like, kind of off the field? Then, obviously, I know you both went to the to the Q and A session as well. What was that like? And in terms of, were you surprised by any of the answers that some of the players or Skinner gave, or, or anything like that? And just the general feeling around the squad. Do you think at the moment? Well, I was like I said earlier, I was quite impressed of uh, the setup. How much of uh, it was a very very large. Uh, uh, contingents, and I say, uh, of uh, members and uh, with all of the technical staff, etc. They went. They all came to the to Malta, uh, basically full, 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 uh, with the MUTV people and that. So it was. Uh, I was surprised by that, if I have to say so myself. Um, it was nice to see how uh, nice some of the players are. Um, like I had a shirt and they all uh, signed for me. Um, yeah, and then again at the Q and A, uh, they were quite chill and um, yeah, the the vibe was quite a good one. You've got a fan in the comments as well. Yeah, Wait, yeah, I met, I met, I met him. Uh, he was quite a lovely guy. Uh, he was the only one singing United chants, uh, so. <laughs> It was very loud, and yeah, I loved it. <laughs> ah, good. Oh, we'll have to if if you are over in the UK, I'll come and say hi to us if you see us at a game, which you uh, most likely will. Yeah, and welcome I'm, to the channel as well, by the way. Yeah, I might be planning a trip soon, but I haven't uh, came down to a date yet. That's it. This is the year where all of the uh, internationals are coming over because I think Yehuda, I think he was in the comments, I believe, is coming over as well. We go. Got a few this year. We'll have to see what we can uh, what we can do there. Um, but Kirsty, sticking with the same question for yourself, what? How did you kind of find the the Q and A setup and everything else? And like I said, there's obviously been a bit of talk about the United squad at the moment. But from your understanding and everything else that you saw, the squad's pretty pretty together and that kind of thing. And again, same question: Were you surprised by any of the answers? Did anything kind of go, oh, "Hang on, <laughs> don't like that answer" or anything like that? No, it was quite expected what I heard. I think um, there was some controversy with Mark, what Mark Skinner said, reunited v Liverpool. I mean, what he meant was, you know, women's football and it hasn't been, you know, as, you know, right, the rivalry wasn't, isn't as, as big as the men. So he's not expecting that type of hype, but it doesn't mean that he won't enjoy beating Liverpool. Obviously, he understands the culture of United and Liverpool and I think he would love to introduce, you know, a culture where we'd love to start trashing Liverpool. So he 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 emphasised on how important it is to prepare the team for, for, for such a match. But, you know, for him, it's it's about winning the game. It's another game and it's three points. And that's as a player, that's how you should should prepare for those type of matches, even though it's a big occasion. It's another match. You just have to get the three points and do, do the job. But in terms of Q and A, it was quite you know um i was like you know the questions were they were simple but they, you know they were they were good in terms of the answer um of their dreams and is you know playing for united how big it is and you know let's face it you all know that playing for united is one of the biggest achievements you can have as a football player but um in terms of q a that that's what mostly it was about um but before the q a we had the opportunity to take some photos get some signatures and speak to the players and the coach and we've had a nice chat with the coach <laughs> with mark and he he's a very nice guy he's an amazing guy i i, I happened to be um talking to someone and he came up to me he's like left wing or right wing i kept on looking at him like, what do you mean left wing or right wing he's like you play what position I'm like I didn't tell him I play football. He's, he was, he was so, you know, his character is amazing. He's like, do left footed, right footed. He's, he's not just, you know, there to, to be there. He was literally asking people, you know, about Malta and he was really interested in being there, enjoying it. He loved it. And he literally spent so much time taking pictures and, and um, talking to people that, you know, I really appreciate that because you don't see that much, you know, that this enthusiasm. 
you know, coming, meeting people. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he met a lot of people in, the, in these like five days they've been here. So, but he's been really amazing and his character is just fantastic. And no wonder these guys are fighting for each other because the coach just pushes them on. And uh, yeah, so that's what we got mostly from, from that. We got to speak to player, the, the, the three players we had there. We got to speak to Mark. And yeah, that was it. Was a great experience. I hope we get that again. They really are looking forward to come back. So I hope I hope they do, so we can get to speak to them more. What was the, just very quickly about before I bring you in? Was the Q and A pre-prepared questions by a host, or was it? Did they come to the like to everyone in the like was sat watching or? Yeah, there was just prepared question, pre-prepared questions. There were um, three United players, Mark Skinner, and um, two women's players that are Maltese who play abroad. So to kind of uh, show that, you know, because there were kids there at the Q&A to show, look, if you work hard, you can achieve, you can go abroad, you can play football. If you really want to, to play football, you have to, you can do it. It's up to you at the end of the day. And they, it was like a promotion for women's football and for and women to and young um, ladies who really want to play football to to go for it, to, to give it a go and, and try their best. No, that's great to hear as well. And I guess, Barry, I'll throw the question over to you. Also, in terms of the comments, Kirsty briefly mentioned it there, the, the, the video that Ramon put out about um, Skinner's answer to the Liverpool rivalry. Um, and like I, said, I don't want to spend ages on this because it really is making something out of nothing when I don't think there's really a, an answer in it. But as it has been mentioned in the comments and everything else, I'll bring it up. Um, but do you think there was anything wrong in what Skinner said about it? I mean, factually, he's correct. But I mean, I don't. Per- I agree with what John Camote said. I don't personally like it, but it's been blown way out of proportion to what he actually said. Yeah, I mean, John's not <clears throat> too far wrong. Um, am I bothered by it? Not in the slightest, not at all. Um, because as you said, factually, he's correct. If you take Liverpool as a rivalry in the women's game so far, it hasn't kicked off. There's always been the Barmy Army, um, no matter how big that might be. I think the difference is going to be that this time when we play Liverpool there's going to be a much bigger Barmy Army. There's going to be a lot more people there, a lot more people singing, a lot more people with it, a lot more people wanting to um, to chant and scream and boo and cheer and do all of the thing that makes a theatre um, and, and a spectacle of football. And I think that will be the massive difference and therefore the rival we will, will begin to grow. I think if you were to say if we had a rival with Arsenal, you'd say yes. But when you think about it, you think about us behind that goal in that Conti Cup game. Let's be honest, it was Anthony digging out the goalkeeper, offering her a Burger King. That was the level of atmosphere. It was 12 men and their dogs and a couple of ladies there as well. You know, we had the lot, but it wasn't an atmosphere. You wouldn't sit there and go, wow, Boreham Wood was rocking. Arsenal away at the Emirates, bouncing. Best away ends that we have had as a Manchester United team. Bar none, that's what everybody seems to say. I think you'll get the similar sort of thing now with Liverpool. So the rivalry will be born. But if you're asking the question, is there a rivalry yet? There isn't. Liverpool haven't even been in the same division as us for most of it. So we haven't had the ability to build that. What I will say is what Kirsty said, which is um, it doesn't matter whether it's women's football or men's football, it's just Man United. Man United does have a rivalry with Liverpool. We have to never forget that. Um, we're not fans of Liverpool. We don't like you and we hope you lose every single game and get relegated. It's very, very simple. And that is included in the WSL. But as much as we hate them, let's not forget just how excited people were to have Liverpool come back up so that we could have these matches. So as much as we hate them, there's still that little bit there as well, isn't there? So, I was, say, I was one of them wanting them to get promoted so we could play them this year. And well, that's not, like, oh, is it? Because you hate them, see? So where's this rivalry? It's not there, is it? No, you want, them, you want to play them, though, don't you? You want to no, play them. If I've got rivals, I want them to be under my shoe so no, I can no. laugh at them consistently like City used to be. Now, all of a sudden, we just keep looking at them getting cricks in our neck. It's horrible. <laughs> Dear, I don't even know where to go from there. Um, <laughs> you want me? <laughs> I was going to say, I don't even know what. Well, to go. Um, I think I've asked everything that I was going to ask, actually, in terms of um, on and off the pitch. But I guess the final question, just to kind of wrap this all up, I guess was it, it sounds really harsh and blunt to say was the trip a success, wouldn't it? Because it's I think overall you'd say yes because of you know obviously the training and everything else. But I'll come to Kirsty and to Ramon for yourselves. Do you think there should be more of these types of things? Obviously, I know United do go abroad for their pre-seasons and these kinds of things, but with the lack of 
with the, the less games in women's football, do you think these kind of events and these things are better from a United point of view to help grow the fan base a little bit more? Because I don't know how many, I think one of you might have mentioned earlier, but how many United fans were actually out there that follow the women's team consistently and that kind of thing. So just for, for both of you, just before we wrap this up, do you think it's it's needed? And obviously from, from a Moles point of view, you'd like to see this a bit more often? Like, um, as, <laughs> um, from someone who comes from women's football in Malta, I think this was desperately needed for us. Um, for United, I think as well, because, you know, it's it was a great atmosphere. They left their country to go to somewhere completely new and they just could do their training, enjoy their football as they do in the UK, but with a different atmosphere and different appreciation. And I think when people are there asking for photos and you get this love, you know, you just enjoy doing your job at the end of the day. So I think United would, would, will come back. If, you know, it, just felt, it felt successful, in my opinion, let's put it like that. But from what I've, I know from what Mark said and from some players, they really enjoyed it. But um, for us, Maltese, it was, I think, more because uh, women's football is is still lacking, and we uh, we wish it grow. So this was this was very important for us. But yeah, for United, I think it will it will be as well because there will be some people who maybe follow the men more than they don't the women. So maybe they can get into the women's game more, and then they can get interested in the Maltese women. So I think it was a win win for both. Maybe for us, it was just a little bit bigger. But I I still think United would be satisfied with the trip and be planning to come back for. Um, warm weather training or in you know, a match. So, yeah, that's what I think. Fingers crossed. Ramon, for yourself, would you like to see this more often? Yeah. Do you think it was a success overall? I think it was the perfect advert for women's football here in Malta uh, because we're lacking that something that takes us to the next level. And I think Manchester United women coming over here to Malta um, and seeing how far how big the gap is between us and them i think that is absolutely what some of us needed here to have basically a reality a reality check because um there's a massive gap and maybe hopefully some girls that were sitting in the stands there were a large number of little uh little i mean teenage girls in the stands hopefully they could have been inspired by what they were seeing in front of themselves uh, hopefully that could level up our game even though i think it's gonna be very difficult for us uh because of the level of infrastructure that we have in our country um but again then again this could there could always be a start for united i think it's also been very beneficial for them obviously coming here to the warm weather of malta it's they couldn't have chosen a better country to come to um a nice easy game basically um yeah i think it's a win-win situation so i hope they can do it again and like i saw a comment it could be maybe bigger next time maybe if not only united maybe some sort of tournament can a friendly tournament could be held in malta i think that could be much more uh, maybe competitive for united in that aspect See what we need, Kirsty. We need your team to play United next. That'll be the that'll be no. the real big one. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to see that. <laughs> we're, still, we're, still, we're still a very young team. Give us some time. Give us some time. <laughs> that would it'd be a bit painful. But because yeah, look, 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 look. If you, if you, if you, I don't care about what the result, I would still go and play against United. It's an experience. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't care where the result would end. I take it because it's 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 United. They would want to play against United. I mean, even if it gets smashed, it's it's United. So <laughs> because the fact is, what was the game Birkirkara versus Man United? It's usually the other way around, a Birkirkara versus other other teams here in Malta. So that's the gap that we're talking about here. There's a massive gap between Birkirkara and then. There are a number of good teams, but then there are a number of uh, teams that are that which makes Birger Kara. Because if you're winning every game in the league, it's you can't really test yourself. And then when you face a power like Manchester United, then you're gonna get smashed. No, agreed. <clears throat> 
I think we'll uh, we'll look to wrap it up there. Then I'll, I'll let Barry. You can shout out. Obviously, well, I don't know. We haven't actually agreed on a topic yet. So if he says one now, it's not agreed. Just putting that out there. Um, yeah, but Barry, you're going to be talking about uh, <laughs> whether or not Connor is the appropriate host for. No, of course not. We are going to be looking at um, whether Connor's here or not. Let's be honest. It's going to be me sat at the top of that anchor, and so we'll talk about whatever I want um, until he comes on and kicks me off all Cavalier style. But I really want to get into what we've just been talking about, which is why are we having to make decisions about which football team we watch? Why is it on the last day of this season when Manchester United men could be fighting for the top four and Manchester United women could be fighting for the top three or the title, as I've told you we're going to be doing, why are we going to be doing that? And then we're stuck having to decide if you are physically going to watch these matches, you're not going to be able to get between the two because it's physically going to be impossible. Why is that? Why was there not more forethought in what goes on in women's football, I think? Um, there does also, I think, it's, it's time to do the public apology, Connor. Um, here at Orff United, WFC, we do <laughs> like to make sure that most information given out, uh, certainly from the top level, is factual. Earlier on today, I oh, say Manchester United women only won 1-0 against Bridgewater. I can confirm it was 2-0, and I apologise for my lack of knowledge. However, one of them was an own goal, and I think that's the one that I might have forgotten. It was only Ella Toon who scored, so theoretically we only got the one. But yeah, join us Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. There we go. I'm going to end it on that. See, I'm actually getting some love for once. It's usually Barry that's getting all the uh, all, all the attention here, but I'm, I'll outtake that. And yes, as John said there, so <clears throat> I'll end it with that. So yeah, obviously the men's show will be back this week after a, a month and a half uh, of no shows. I appreciate John. Yes, so hopefully United soon will have a new owner. Yes, I am technically the uh, the new owner of, of the All United brand, which um, as you may or may not have seen. Um, but yeah, business as usual on this channel and obviously the men's channel will be back up and running with a very, very big guest this month as well, which I can't say any more on yet, but that is pretty much agreed and out there and ready to go. So we shall wrap it up there. Kirsty, Rowan, thank you so much for coming on. Um, your insight has been much appreciated on this one. Make sure you're following these two, three. Uh, make sure you're liking the video and subscribing and we shall see you in the next one. Hey,